Okay, so this is another day where I'm going to introduce you to a Gumroad tool that can be used in Max for Live. So this is for anyone that has the Ableton Live 12 standard, I think you have to have with the Max for Live, or at least you have to have, for sure you have to have Max for Live. So let me, let me click in and just show you. It's called M2TM Chords. And you can see right now, currently, now I have it, it's at 15 euro, which is about $16.23 or something like that for um, USDA or USDA, <laughs> USD dollars, okay, American dollars. All right, so what's cool about this thing is, is that it allows you to type in your chords and also create auto inversions so it can invert chords if you don't know what that means i'll show you in a few minutes uh bear with it um it looks like if you use the legato option it can merge a uh, theme into a single that's cool so a longer note and again it says great for pads and strings of course um and i really like the fact that it supports slash chords which is good. If you don't know what a slash chord is, they basically explain it here, chord inversions, rootless and drop chords, open and closed voices. But the way I like to think of it is too, is um, a slash chord can be like, this is a G in the bass, and then here's a C major seven. So if you know what a C major seven is on the keyboard, and then you put a G in the bass, that's what that is, okay? The slash means this this note here is in the bass, played in the bass note. And what I mean by the bass note is it's further up the keyboard. Let's say if middle C is C3 on your keyboard and you're playing a C major seven, and then you go up an octave and add a G, that would be what a G, uh, what a C major seven slash G is. Okay, the, enough of the theory. Um, they offer a PDF manual, which is really cool. So look, it says here, it only works with Live 12 Suite Edition or Live 12 Standard with Max for Live support. The suite has everything in it, otherwise you need the standard. So if you don't have that, but you're interested, one of the things I always tell people, if you don't have Ableton uh, Live you know, 12, uh, maybe you don't even have 11 or never had Ableton at all, they offer 90 day trial and you have unlimited access through the suite to use everything. So grab the um, 90 day trial and I mean, I'm not saying buy this just because of it, but grab that and start playing around with Ableton. I have videos, there's plenty of videos online. That's how I even learned um, so that you can get into it. Because to me, in my opinion, Ableton is one of the best DAWs to create in. I know you hear a lot of hype on Fruity Loops, and there are some reasons why, because it does have great MIDI editing um, in there. I think probably one of the best, but um, for audio editing, I think Ableton takes the cake on that one. And then on top of that, I like Ableton for just creating these little tools that people make. There's not a lot of tools, and these are affordable tools. See, 15 euro. So, yeah, very affordable tools. Okay, so let's get into this video. Now, just so we know, too, they also, this uh, MIDI to Max makes other products. And one of their products that they make is called, make is called MT, M2TM Progressions. Now, Progressions is a little bit different. It says it's over 700 billion different chord progressions. That's insane. And I probably will try this one later, but I'm going to try this other one first. And then I might jump into this one and get it. Same principle. You can do the auto inversions, the legato stuff. Um, but even right here, it says um, you can specify chord inversions, open voice, open and close voicings, select chord complexity, and create thicker chords like gospel chords is what I think of when I think of thicker chords and choose among 150 plus rhythm patterns. So they 
this is crazy. Like this is even easier. This is like having scalar um, in uh, a, a scalar like plugin in um, Ableton under Max for Live. So maybe I'll try this one next. It's the same price, fifteen. So I might support. I like supporting these uh, devs who I don't really know, um, but they're you know they're not a big corporation. You know, they don't make a ton of money for their work, but this is still pretty cool. So let's look at this one feature. It says you can generate harmonies for an entire song by concatenating. I don't even, I probably said that wrong. I'm sorry, I'm not the best at this. Um, simpler progressions in the same session or arrangement clips. New progressions can be appended to the existing ones and the loop match option can ensure that the clip loop areas always either match the most recent progression or encompass all the sub progressions generated so far that's pretty crazy so it it works really in conjunction with what you already have made interesting well we're going to try the chords version this version maybe we'll try another time if i like what i see on this first one and I would play this video, but I don't know if it'll be copyright strike if I watch somebody's video on here and play it. Um, so I'm not gonna do that, but I would encourage you to go to Gumroad. It's midi to the max.gumroad.com and then take a look at their stuff. They have some other tools also that you can look at. All right, let's get to Ableton real quick. Oops, that's not Ableton. I guess uh, there it is. All right. So to install this, you have to put the file here. I'll show you real quick in case you're wondering. Let's minimize that. So hold on one second while I move this away. All right. So in your Ableton tools, you'll get this little file here. You see it right here, M M2TM chords. Okay. You just copy that file into your Ableton user folder. Then when you go up to Ableton Live settings, you'll hit the rescan. It'll scan in just to make sure it's there. And it'll automatically put it at that point in its proper place. And you'll notice it's down here in one of these tabs right here. Okay. So here's your octave, your roots, your bass, your duration, the volume. Um, and if you click generate, it would generate, but technically it's not going to do that because we haven't punched any chords in. Let's do this. Let's put Dorian mode. Let's set the scale on the outset. Um, we'll just pick this one. I have in here, just so you know. Oops, it's not even on that. I meant to go here. I have the um, Spitfire Audio Intimate Grand Piano. And then you want to make a create a loop. So command this is Shift Command M, which is in the MacBook, and create yourself a MIDI loop. Click inside the MIDI loop, and that's where you'll find this box. So this box allows you to type in chords. So I'm gonna do something simple. Um, and I've never used it, so we're doing this together. So let's just go C. Let's go, let's see, what notes are in this scale? Doesn't really matter, I'm just gonna pick some chords. Let's go C minor, G, um, and I'm doing real, let's do G7. Um, let's do, so this is more for a person who kind of knows their chords, or at least has an idea of what their chords are gonna be like. The progressions one is more for someone who doesn't have a clue. They just want, you know, to to try something, I guess, to see if they can find a progression that may fit the track that they're doing. Um, so I'm going to say that up front. This is going to be C minor, and then we'll do D sus4. Oops. I don't know um if let's see if that generates there you go 
So you see it did four. So if you have duration on four, it's only gonna do four bars, which is actually good because in, in theory, <laughs> um, you could make parts like maybe that and then come back and then, let me see if it lets you, no, you just keep typing, okay. So you could do that and then you could be like, all right, I wanna switch something in here. So if you do auto here, it looks like these are different voicings open auto fine huh. let's do auto oh that's the uh, legato there where it extends the note and you'll see it's telling you that this is C this is a uh, B um, it says B sharp. If you change the scale up here, it's gonna change what this note's gonna refer to. But technically this is C, by the way, in case you're wondering. Um, all right, bass. Yeah, so see, you can add a bass note. Mind you, I'm trying this with you, so I've never done this. So you can add a bass note, that's cool. Um, the velocity, you can adjust the velocity of, now it would be cool if you could do individual notes, but you know what? You got the randomizer here if you want to randomize it, see? So you could easily just do that. Let's make this four bars since that's all I did for the duration. And then we will go ahead and loop that out. Okay, now watch. I'm gonna go to here, and we're gonna do humanize. It's gonna throw these off just a little bit. Now, I want these to fit the scale, so I'm gonna click fit to scale. It's gonna move whatever I need to get these notes in the scale. Because even though I plugged in chords, if the scale doesn't match the chord, then, you know what I'm saying? That's where you got to kind of know some theory and realize these purple dots represent what's in key. The other ones are not in key. So now let's hear it within a key. And you can invert even in scalar. You could just select this and go invert and it's going to... Or you can go back in here. I'll leave it on, yeah. Oof. Whatever I did there, let's get rid of that. And you see it created a loop. Oh, so you can extend that. That's even better. Look at that. So we're gonna go back to the basics here. And then I'm just gonna go in. Now you could use this inversion thing to adjust the octaves it looks like. Yeah, so you could push it up a little bit more or down. Let's push it here. That's the same octave, okay, we're at. All 
All right. Let's push these two together. our randomness we're gonna put that back in because that made it sound better just off the top so click on that highlight all of them and then adjust the randomness there you go a little more humanization And then if you wanted to strum, you could go in here and do strum and do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and put them back to zero. Tension. So you see how I'm using the MT, M2 TM chords just to plug chords. So now let's do a different one. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and delete these. We're gonna set the duration up for eight. So the duration should be for eight. I'm gonna extend this out to eight. Now we're gonna type in some more chords. So I'm gonna try some more intricate chords. Um, let's just do it, all right. So I wonder if I type C major nine. F minor seven. Um, G sus four add nine D minor nine C major nine C seven E minor nine to D mm, to A major nine. I'm just making this up, by the way, guys. Oh. So, wait a minute. Let me try something here. Hold on. Oops. Let's go back. All right, so why did it put these out here is the question instead of just staying within the range I gave it. Interesting. two reps Hold up. let's do I don't want to delete it because then I have to do all those chords again um, let's see here so again bear with me as I've never tried this before so I'm just trying to do duration eight Put the base note in, generate. It's still doing each chord for a whole bar, which I don't want. Okay, so this creates some type of loop. I'm gonna have to read in on this. Hold on, let me see if you put any helpful hits, hints. If enabled, the clips loop 
automatic area automatically matches the progression being inserted the actual event of the loop area depends on the state of the button to the right and this is the button to the right matching mode of the clips loop okay so yeah we want that on if I'm not mistaken the loop always matches the area okay we want it off because we want it to match the area that I've looped but for whatever reason let me delete this hold on okay so my question is why is it still doing hmm I'm so here's what I'm trying to figure out okay so there's it's doing 16 bars I know the tempo is faster so let's see if we I don't want that many bars so here's all the chords let me see if I delete and create a new loop what that does oh cool it just it uh, kept the chord progression all right so let's generate it still wants to do it I'm not sure why there's gotta be something I'm doing wrong um, see the duration set at eight is giving me six Okay, so this duration, hold on, let me see. The number of times the chord progression must be repeated. Oh, okay. So the duration means if you put it at four, it's just gonna go for four beats. If you put it at eight, that means it's gonna go for eight beats, which is like two bars. So that's what that is. I know what a bass is, that's pretty easy. Uh, include the omitted root note of the chord, not worry about that. That's the octave to where it's gonna be. Um, the reps, the number of times the chord progression must be repeated. Okay, so that's, if you wanna repeat that chord progression for longer, just like let's say your whole song was this chord progression, then you could just rep it out till you get to that point that makes sense all right what is this stuff rest the insert point to okay so that's where it's starting this is again has to do with where the um track is starting and then root where i know what that is okay so the only thing i would say on this that i would love to see is the and I maybe okay transpose the progression up a semitone and what's this clear all the chords in the progression okay so you can clear them with that button all right so it has everything I can imagine you just have to remember to go to here if you want to use the humanize feature and also inverting and fitting to scale so if you're in a scale and you want to be in that scale you need to fit it to the scale. Well, first you better lock your scale up here. Then you fit it to the scale. As long as this button's on, it's going to fit to that scale. All right. Next thing you can do is you want to do your randomizing of these chords so they don't sound so stagnant. The velocities.
This is pretty cool. And if you want to invert certain parts, So I would say if you're going to invert a chord, like let's say you want to invert these. In my opinion, by the way, you can highlight the scale here if you need to see it all the way across without having to look back at the bar. You can just see the purple lines. In my opinion, this is for somebody who kind of knows chords well enough. Because um, I understand what's going on, but I think the new beginner person might struggle and this thing is moving okay so, oh my goodness what in the world this thing might confuse the beginner um and the workaround i would say for it I'm trying to think of my thoughts as I do this. Mind you, I'm not. This isn't a rehearsed thing. So let's delete this, and I'm going to show you what I mean. The beginner person could come in and draw out, let's say, four bars. Okay. And as long as the scale is locked, they could go in and put a note that let's say I'm just gonna do something similar hit option and you can drag that over there option it again option again and by the way I'm holding option to do this now let's say these notes are out of scale Select them all, fit to scale. And now you have this progression. Hit humanize. Maybe even you wanna humanize a little more. There you go. And then maybe do some inverting just press the invert button. Until you get a sound you like. That works. See what I mean? How quick that is? Now, it does require you drawing in some MIDI note. If that's not your bag, then the M2M or M2TM chords is nice. Because if you do know, hey, I like a C major or I want a C minor or whatever, you could just start plugging in chords and it's going to just generate those chords. The only thing I would say is you need to understand the chord, correlation of how the chords relate to each other. Are they the right chords in those scales? If not, you're still going to have to use the fit to scale if you don't have the right skill set for the chords you select. And then it's going to move those chords into scale and make it a little bit easier. So it's a it's a toss up to me. I mean, for 16 bucks, if you already got this and you wanna learn and start writing in chords, 
to come up with ideas, why not? Now, the difference for me is this is a cool tool because I would use this to just come up with something random personally. Um, I know you can, let's clear that out. I know that you can just punch in some whatever chords you want. C sus four add nine um, G major seven or whatever. Let's do G minor seven. Let's just do two chords. Click generate, and I could pick those two chords, and I and I understand that they're gonna they're in scale right because these two chords can fit this scale but if you don't know that this might be a little confusing for you in my opinion and it and it hopefully it's not confusing i put these like that then i'd probably do a little humanize maybe a little more just to see to make it If you don't know, then to me, this will be more confusing. So you're gonna to have to decide, is this for you? Now I'm not selling this to anybody because they didn't pay me. I actually bought it myself to try it out. But the good thing is in Ableton, this is fast. I mean, this is as fast as it gets. The next step will be dragging chords from maybe like a scaler or something like that into the um, into the grid here, and then you could just put them in the order you want them, and then you know consolidate them. But going back to this clip where we this is really fast. Now, what I don't like about this is, and I said this before when it comes to drawing in notes, it does not give you the rhythm to the sound. I mean, there's no rhythm to this. This is just drawing in notes. So while it's cool to get some basic chords down, if your whole song's gonna be real basic, then that's fine. If you just need some simple chords, but you're gonna have to play with this to make this sound musical and rhythmic. Right? And the way, and also I don't get like this right here. Sometimes it confuses me. See how it generates, but it leaves the rest in the background. I don't get that. So I'm gonna delete that. But anyway, um, here, move this over here. So you're gonna have to really do some musical thinking here to try to figure out whether this would be for you. Now I'm taking my time with you and just talking to you about it like a friend would do because that's kind of how I do my videos. I don't really do the whole trying to be extra in the video. But um, I'm just giving you my thoughts as we go along. You'll need to use other features in Ableton like the invert, the fit to scale, the humanize to make this sound more real and not so stagnant. Also use the um, strum, strum tool. Let me put this back where it belongs, which is and if you decide to use the strum tool, make sure that you shorten this a little bit on the back end so that way you got some room to strum it out like that. And this could be fun. Don't get it twisted. It could be real fun. I mean, you can make some cool chordal ideas from it but it is going to require a little more thought on your part to do this this is not an easy um, tool to use if you don't know chords at all so 
from that perspective, I would say only grab this if you know chords enough to where you feel comfortable with writing in the chords. Now, on the next time I do a video about this particular gum road, I'm gonna sh I am gonna grab the progressions one and I'm gonna let you know my thoughts on the progressions. Hopefully, there will be, um, I'll have some more thoughts on it by that time I've spent some time with this off camera to play with it and see what I think to give you a little more insight on it. That's the goal, is just to get you insight. So if you wanna get it, again, it's at Gumroad's, um, I think it's MIDI to the, no, I forgot what it was. <laughs> oh, let me pull it up. There we go. It's a MIDI, let me go into progressions. MIDI to the max. MIDI to the number two, the max dot gumroad.com. So check them out. I'm going to look at the progressions too and probably grab that one just so I can show it to you on the next one. I think these are great tools for MIDI. It is fun if you're in Ableton to use stuff that's in Ableton because this will always be at your access at the piano roll. So you could jump on here and start writing in, literally writing in your chords. And um, yeah, or let's say you hear a song. This would be cool. I just thought it was, all right, you hear a song on the radio. You're like, oh man, that progression is nice. I'd like to use something similar. So then you go find out what the progression is, figure out the chords you like, and then write those chords in. Then you could start getting chord progressions from anywhere. So I'll do that on the next time I see you guys on this video. I'll do one, I'll pick a song, something randomly popular, whatever you wanna call it. And then I'll um, figure out what the chords are. I'll make it simple too, so that it's not complex. And then I'll show you guys how you could use it to just take chords from other songs and then make your own song out of it, right? Because nobody owns chord progressions. If they did, then we would never be able to write any music. People don't own the progression. They own the rhythm it's played in and they own maybe the sound and the rhythm collectively. But even the sound, most sounds nowadays, everybody's using the same sounds. So we don't really own the sounds. It's the rhythm is played in that and the way it's laid out. So there's ways and workarounds to get around that. I'll show you guys a few tips and tricks that you can use. For somebody that's more advanced, they understand what this uh, M2, M2TM chords can do for them. All right. So hopefully everybody is well. I'm going to get off. Until the next one, I'm out.